Wellington. So today my talk is going to be to the point and I'm trying to beat Philip Cantrell's 10 minute sermon. That is my aim. It's going to be to the point and it is relevant for all ages. So that is why kids, you don't have a pack because this is for you as well. So make sure you're all listening because we're going to do something different and exciting after the sermon, the talk. Okay, so when I went to Elim Conference back in May, I felt God say we needed to do three things better as a church. Three things. So one was reading the Bible more, another one more praying, and the third one more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as a church, more reading the Bible, more praying, and more of the Holy Spirit. It's nothing new. Definitely not complicated, and you don't need any special skills to do those three things. Now, some super holy people, and I'm looking at some people in particular, might be amazing at doing all three of those things already. But if you're like me, that one of those things might be a weakness that you can improve on, that you don't give your full heart to. Praying, Holy Spirit, reading the Bible. And if you are brilliant to all three, speak to me afterwards and share your secret on how you stay amazing at all three of those things. But today, I don't want to focus on praying and I don't want to focus on reading the Bible. I want to focus on the Holy Spirit. So those of you that have seen Lauren's great Facebook and Insta posts, uh, my talk is called Come Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that is why it's going to be short and sweet, and then we're going to wait for him to come. So, we know that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. It's part, he's part of that three-in-one package. Jesus himself describes the Holy Spirit as a gift for us. So in Acts 1, 4 to 5, it says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, just last month, Lynette spoke on Pentecost Sunday about the Holy Spirit and what it means to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to focus on that today. If you want to learn more about that, go on YouTube, 5th of June, and watch Lynette's talk. But today, we're going to look at what it means to spend time with the gift that is the Holy Spirit. Can I have my four volunteers, please? Thank you. I've got a ball for my demonstration. Being as it's summer and fresh, we thought we'd use a beach ball. Okay, so Beatrix first. So if you want to stand at the front. So Beatrix and I are going to play catch. I'm going to hold the microphone under my arm. Okay? This is what God intended it to be like in the Garden of Eden. So I am God, nothing like God, but I am imitating God, and Beatrix is Adam and Eve. And he wanted us to have a two-way conversation. Adam and Eve talking to God, God talking to Adam and Eve, together in the garden, backwards and forwards. Thank you. You may sit down. Okay, so that was how God planned it to be. But then sin entered the world, and that relationship, that two-way relationship, that throwing and catching between the two broke down. God sent Jesus to reconnect us with God and then left us with the gift of the Holy Spirit inside us so we are once again connected with him. And God wants us to get back to that two-way conversation, us talking to him and him talking to us. The problem is that even though we may love him, we may not spend enough time with him and enough time listening to him. Benjamin. Now, what I say about all of these isn't necessarily true, it's just an example. Okay, so Ben loves God, but is very, very busy. He prays and asks God for things, but straight away, he goes on his Xbox. And then he goes to play football with his friends. And then he goes and does lots and different things. So he throws the ball to God, God catches it because he never ever misses it. But Ben is distracted. And when God throws the word back, <laughs> he's my child, 
bottom and I'm just throwing at him. But when God throws the ball back, he doesn't catch it. He does not receive that message back to him because he hasn't given enough time. Thanks, Ben. You can go. So he doesn't give enough time. So we need to be spending time in our busy lives. Sometimes as Christians, we can be very busy doing the right things. You can be busy spending time telling people about God. You can be busy going to church and every single meeting you can go to. But are you actually listening to him and waiting for the answer? So you can be busy doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Samuel, come forward. I'm not going to throw it off your head. <laughs> Samuel loves God too. And every single night, Samuel asks for the same question. Put your hands out there, Samuel. So he is asking for the same question. He's throwing the ball to God and he's awaited. He's got his hands in that ready position to catch something from God. But when God throws it, Samuel doesn't get it because it's not the right time. So what Samuel doesn't see is super, super frustrating. And sometimes when we're praying and asking God the same thing again and again, when we don't hear that answer straight away and catch it, we get frustrated and we get annoyed with God because I want that answer and I want it now. Thank you, Samuel, you can sit down. But this is when we need to lean on him more and trust on him, trust in him more. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So it's not that you're not hearing back from God because he loves someone else more. It's not that you're not hearing back from God because you're not important. It just may not be the right time. God knows everything, and he will make your path straight. You just need to lean in on him more. Trust in him more. Okay, Elodie, pick up the ball. Elodie loves God. And she also spends some time listening to him. The very first time she asks God for something, she asks God for a picture. God throws it and she catches it straight back. Thank you, you can sit down. So, it's okay, you can leave it there. So, it is all about listening to God. Can I have a clap for my four volunteers? So, it is all about being in tune with the Holy Spirit, being connected and together. Sometimes it happens, like Elodie, straight away. You catch that picture the first time you ask. Other times, like Samuel, it can be a long waiting process. But God knows. God has all the plans worked out for us. So, after I finish speaking, we're going to have some time to connect to God. Now, we could easily be like Ben and get distracted with so many different things. We could get distracted with what we're going to eat today. That's normally my thought. What's for dinner? What I've got to do? All the hundreds of jobs, what you've got to do when you get home. It could be that you're thinking, children, of your last week at school and all the things you're going to do in the summer holidays. But I'm going to ask you to try and keep focusing on the Holy Spirit and keep focusing on him. So how God intended it to be was us by his side. Just like Beatrix in the beginning, that backwards and forwards, two-way conversation. When we get distracted, I'm oh, sorry, I've done that bit. And if you as an individual don't feel the Holy Spirit's presence today or catch the ball like Samuel, you're no less important. God doesn't love you any less. Just keep giving him time. Spend more and more time with him. The Holy Spirit can move in many different ways, sometimes through a feeling of joy, sometimes through a physical emotion of laughing or crying, sometimes through visions, sometimes by feeling comforted. There are so many ways. And what God wants us to do is to talk to him and to catch him back, to connect with him. Yeah. In Acts 2, 17 to 18, it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Amen. Even on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. 
This is powerful and exciting stuff. And we're seeing a glimpse of it in our kids and youth work. So why not do it together as our church family? As it says, young and old, females and males, sons and daughters, everyone here is included in that. All you have to do is to be willing. And whether you've experienced the Holy Spirit hundreds of times or never encountered him before, it is for you. It is a gift for you from Jesus. In our youth and kids, sometimes we spend just three minutes in the Holy Spirit's presence, waiting to catch something. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Other times, they spend a lot longer than you're going to do today. Sometimes we spend a whole session, a whole hour, just waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And do you know what? The Holy Spirit appears every single time. Amen. Not to everyone, but to some. Those whose hearts are connected. Those whose hearts are distracted. And it is exciting stuff. Why do we hear from him? Because we create a space. We create that time. We get rid of all our distractions and focus on him. You can do this at church, at home, anywhere, create a space, even on the loo. And this is my secret, I quite often have that Holy Spirit time on the toilet. Because if you don't take your phone to the loo, you can have an incredible time with Jesus <laughs> on the toilet. You can have it anywhere. So today we're going to give him some time. If it's your first time here or you're not a Christian, feel free to join in too. Feel free to call the Holy Spirit to you. Whether you're a child and you've done it before or you've not done it before, it's for you too, so don't get distracted. If you'd like to ask any questions, our leadership team are around. Please put your hand up or come to the front. The same with if you'd like prayer. If you put your hand up or come to the front, one of our leadership team will come to you. Now, the band are going to come up and are going to play some gentle music in the background. We're not going to sing songs at this moment because we don't want to focus on the words of songs. We want to focus on his presence. We want to focus on him. We want to lean into him more. At the back on a table are lots of Bibles. If God gives you a Bible verse, do not be tempted to look it up on your phones because if you're anything like me, you'll get your Bible app notice all the notifications and get distracted. So there are Bibles at the back. If you get a Bible verse, have a look at the back, at the real thing, paper copy, which we don't use much more, but paper copy, have a look at it. There's also at the back, communion. Now, no one's gonna be serving you. You can go at any point. You can go straight away if your heart is burning for it. The Holy Spirit tells you to go straight away to that communion table, you can. If you want to go a little later, you can also do that. The communion table has the printed Bible verses on there. So if you're used to someone at the front reading, take the bread, take the, take the juice, read the Bible verse and do it yourself. But make sure your heart is connecting with God. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. It's an intimate thing, communion. An intimate thing just between you and God. Yeah. So spend that time talking to him. There's also paper and pens at the back. If you get a prayer or a word or a picture, write it down. God could be using it for you or God could be using it for someone else. Last time we did the Holy Spirit full session last month in kids' church, one of our kids felt inspired by the Holy Spirit to write down a prayer. That very prayer was found by Lauren and someone she was praying for. That prayer had the exact words that that child had written that Lauren had just spoken over this person. The Holy Spirit works in ways we can't even understand. Amen. So to write a prayer on a paper and for that to be the exact prayer someone else needed. So there's papers at the back, there's communion at the back, and there's also the rugged cross. There's chairs around it. If you're not able to go and kneel in front of it and you feel the Holy Spirit wants you there at the cross, there's some chairs. But do what the Holy Spirit tells you to. If you want to kneel at the foot of the cross, lie at the foot of the cross, dance at the foot of the cross, you do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. 
I love the story of an American Christian who was driving past the petrol station and they felt in their gut the Holy Spirit say, go inside that station and do a handstand up against that vending machine. I would have carried on driving. <laughs> I don't think I'd have done a handstand against the vending machine. But they felt in their gut the Holy Spirit say, go and do it. So this woman went inside the petrol station and did a handstand against the vending machine. The person behind the counter broke down, broke down crying and said, this very morning I prayed and said, God, <laughs> you are real. Someone needs to come in and do a handstand against that very vending machine. That is how God works. So let's connect with the Holy Spirit. Let's be radical. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do something radical, do it. The disciples looked drunk. They weren't drunk. It was the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. If the Holy Spirit tells you to sit and not move and just be in his presence, sit. You don't have to move at all. If anyone would like prayer or if anyone would like communion fetching for them because they're unable to get to the back, just put their hands up. But we're going to focus in on him. I'm going to ask everyone to close their eyes just so we don't get distracted and I'm going to ask you to focus on him so you're just going to call Jesus you're just going to call the Holy Spirit upon you and if you're a child in here and you're normally in kids church sit on a chair because you don't need to colour in right now you be connected to the Holy Spirit our gift from Jesus Thank you. 